Welcome back to the East Circuit, the only way to turn up your weekend. I hope you're sending in those requests to White 54 channel or the East Circuit on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Our first interview is not a guest to the East Circuit, it's Anushka. She's here again with a new song, Shine. How have you been since last time? Oh, I've been awesome. It's so much exciting things have been happening. Mm -hmm. I've uh, dropped Shine now. Okay. And Shine, as you know, is one of my Kenyan songs. It's inspired by Kenya and being in Kenya. And now I'll be traveling with it to France to perform it as part of my showcase at Medum, which is the largest music industry event in the world. Okay. So I'm very excited. Things have been rolling, rolling, rolling. In terms of like uh, the way you create your music, is it always the same way? Because like you said, that this is inspired by Kenya and yeah. the Kenyan influences. Because you travel a lot, you've been everywhere. Yes. So is it the same way with every piece of music that you create? Like it's inspired by the people and the culture there? Absolutely. I just believe I'm a song catcher and I'm a very sensitive person. I think most artists are probably, we're a little bit hypersensitive. Yeah. So we just feel the vibes of every place we are. And as a traveler, I'm just naturally curious about learning about other people's cultures, how they speak. Language is always a reflection of culture as well. Mm. So I'm always fascinated to try to learn a little bit wherever I travel of the language and then since I'm a songwriter the way I, I use it is I apply it in a song <laughs> it <laughs> comes it in yeah, a song. somehow it just mm. happens but I work hard uh, is there like a plan okay yes there is the culture that influences your music as a songwriter but uh, like you know more personal influences uh, can we expect that from you very soon there are many personal okay a lot of my songs are about Broken hearts. Yeah, because mm. I can imagine, like, mm. when you started, those it are was sort of like personal band. things. I'm sort of hinting here. Yeah. Yes, I have a lot of songs about. I have a whole album called My Kind of Heartbreak. My Kind of Heartbreak. It's all about being broken hearted. Uh -huh. Broken hearted by having people reject you as an artist, broken hearted as a lover, broken hearted as a friend, betrayals. The whole album is about that. Trust me, a lot of my personal experiences go into my song. Mm. Even a song like Shine. Okay, I did not grow up in a ghetto. But I have struggled as an artist. There was a time when I was a music student at Berklee College on loans and all I could afford to buy was noodles to eat every day. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I know what so it's like you, to you be nervous. So you found a way to make it relate to you. Yes, I always, it's all, look, it's always coming from some authentic place. Okay. But then you always, as a writer, you always shape something around it to make it more universal. Mm. Right? Yeah. But it, there's, there's nothing fake about the origin of the vibe. It also comes from me, otherwise it wouldn't carry. Yeah, because you can't just carry someone's story unless you relate with it yeah. in some way. They always say, write what you know. Write what you know. If you're not doing that, you, you, it's not going to work. Because people sense if it's fake. I They'll think get. even as singers, like uh, Bob Dylan used to say, sing what you know as well. Because otherwise you can't give out the inflections and someone can't feel, like the audience can't feel whatever it is you're yeah. singing. Yeah, and then if you have a little bit more content that's a bit more mature, yeah. it might sound a bit silly to have like some upcoming 16-year-old pop star mm. try to interpret that. Yeah. Like, you know, with the blues, you say the blues, you have to live long to do the blues right. Speaking of teenage years and music, uh, you were in a rock band when you were younger, you're the lead singer. Uh, then and now, is it easier, is it harder, what have you learned, what have, are you incorporating right now? Right now, I'm claiming my space okay. on the world stage as an artist <laughs> after hustling and kicking ass for 23 mm. years. I'm way overdue for my recognition, so I'm enjoying that, but I'm still pushing. You push harder, the more rewards you get. Mm. The better, the more people are watching you, the harder you have to work and step up. Mm. You see, so you can get away with having a small gig in a town where people are mostly drunk and go, yeah, cool, yeah, man, it's so good, <laughs> I love how you play guitar, you know, Ooh, uh. cute girls, you know, but as you get older and you're really starting to get taken more seriously by people in the industry, you have to be extremely competent, you have mm. to be very ready, always prepared. Does that mean now you have to be selective with the kind of gigs you go to? Me, I'm the kind of person, I've always been selective, mm. but... I'm also very open, like I'll play, you know, a charity gig for free. Somebody asked, like right after this show, I've been asked to perform at the Swan Festival. I'm going to try to make it over there. If they want, they want me on stage. It's a, it's a support women artists uh, network, I believe. Nice. And okay. so something like that, they ask me, Anushka, can you show up? Yeah, I'll go. If I can, I'll get there and I'll do it. Because it's for a good cause. Of course. Oh. And because artists, you know, we need money, but it's not just about money. The day it's just about money, you're not an artist, you sold out. You sold out. Yeah, you can't sell out because then you have nothing left to share. Mm. You see, you have to keep it real. 
but you also have to be smart about it. So you get more selective, or at least you try to make sure that you're earning enough to cover your lifestyle. Because it's expensive to be an artist. You have to <laughs> pay for the studio. Yeah. You have to pay for your guitar strings. You know, you have to pay for your plugs, your batteries. You have to pay to copyright your songs. Vocal lessons. I spent a ton of money on lessons, yes, mm. definitely. Uh, how was your time at Berkeley? And do you think uh, uh, without it, you could have been where you are now? No way. No way. I would say an exemplative, but I'm not allowed to say it on TV. I would say, no, <laughs> there's no way I would have been where I am now. Because mm. Berkeley, you see, I was self-taught before. Mm. And I was in an era when women were still not really that prominent. Mm. In, it was always guys around me, always guys. And I'm not saying they were bad, but some of them were. A lot of them were really supportive. Yeah. And they're like, hey, cool, wow, you know, hey, let me help you here. And some of them were just like, hey, you want to come over and no, I'll teach you some chords? Motives, yeah. <laughs> you know, what? They have ulterior motives. Well, they just want to teach you some chords <laughs> at like two in the morning with a bottle of wine. Uh, of what do you think that do. means? I do. <laughs> you know. Uh, but uh, that's interesting. You, you were self-taught. She got her first guitar. You got your first guitar from your grandmother. I did, yeah. Then you taught yourself how to I play did. the guitar. Yes, because you see, I was lonely and I was bullied a lot in school. Mm. So I had nothing. So, so that was like your outlet. It was. The music. It was, yeah. That's when you started songwriting? Absolutely. I was just playing chords like, a, you know, learning how to play. And you just sit and go. That's what you do at 13. You think you sound great. Yeah. It's a big, you know. Then you go to a place like Berkeley and mm. it elevates you. Because now you're in the big game. You're in mm. the big leagues. You're mm. competing with people who are going to be. Was it intimidating very. the first time you were there? Oh my gosh. Because I first, can only yes. imagine it, it's even hard uh, to get into Berkeley. It was. I actually came in on probation because I oh. didn't have the musical education behind me because I was self-taught. So they gave me probation for one year and they said, look, if you can hack it for one year and you do okay, we let you stay. Mm. But if you, know, you fall behind, we're going to have to drop you and mm. give the place to someone else. So, of course, I went on to push hard as I could, and then I got awards, and I got scholarship, and I ended up being able to graduate cum laude, and I was the only girl in my guitar lessons at the four years I was there. Mm. And you ask if it was intimidating. It was terrifying because I remember the first time I walked into a guitar class, you know, I came in with this, like this, it wasn't this acoustic, it was another one that has sadly been stolen. <laughs> but I walked into the, my first guitar class and I walk into this room and they have all these chairs set up and there's like all these guys sitting there with the, these electric guitars and I was carrying yes, an acoustic. It was acoustic. Yeah, I mean, and, it, yeah, and they were all sitting there like, you know, doing all these skills like, oh, trying to look impressive, you know. And I was like, and I'm thinking, what what are they doing? <laughs> you know, I'm like, I can play like, you know. <laughs> so I was in there, and then one of the guys looked at me, go, Yo, babe, I think you're in the wrong room. <laughs> and I was like, Is this guitar, guitar 12B with John McCullen? Mm. And like, uh huh. The guys are just staring at me. I was so, I was like, okay. <laughs> And then I'm, and you know, they're all so cool. They're just, you know, they're just pretending to be so cool. Mm. Hey, I was very scared. But I think that's nice because you, you also like diving into different genres of music. I do. When you started out, it was rock. Then you uh, dove into blues. So yeah. can I define you with a specific genre? No. Or you're still exploring at right. the moment? I will always explore because mm. a good artist is constantly leaving the comfort zone. Mm. You see, you may not become the biggest artist out there by mm -hmm. leaving the comfort zone. It depends on how true you are as an artist yeah. and where your priorities lie. If you just want to be a star, you can do a hit single. There's a common formula for writing hit music. A lot of people don't know this, but they've done studies. Hit music nowadays, it's, it's the denomination of the common denominator of chord functions and harmony and theory and melody mm -hmm. writing. Mm -hmm. You can do that easily. If you know the formula, you can write songs like that and push them out. And that, that's why we have hit factories. And there's nothing wrong. I'm not dissing it. That's part of the dialogue. It's totally cool. Mm -hmm. But I just feel like sometimes we also need to broaden the perspective a little bit and make more room for artists who are maybe more interested in exploration yeah. than being a commercial commodity. Maybe that's not their priority. Like in terms of Kenyan music, uh, you've been here a while, you've uh, experienced Kenyan music and uh, by now I'm sure you've noticed most of it is Afropop. 
Yes, a lot of it is, huh? Most of it, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's unfortunate. I think it is, because this is what I'm saying. Um, uh -huh. you, you like to dive into different genres. I do. If you go to any other country, they dive into different genres. There are artists who are exploring blues, jazz, R&B, then Afro-pop and pop and rock, and, you know, every, you get a sense of different tastes, and everything is mm. covered. But when you come to different other countries, it's like their focus is on dance music. Actually, I, I'm not sure I agree with you, Mike, on that, because in my circle of artists that I've been exposed to, very few of them are like me, and mm. actually interested in doing like something with like jazz chords. And they're going into... You know, a lot of them are st still in, they find a place they belong, that they find they're being successful, and they mm. stay, because they're like, if I do something else, maybe I'll lose my, my footing here. But isn't that, you know, in a way, like settling out? Because it's like a, when you, like you said, yeah. finding something that uh, will bring the cash, then you settle for it. Look, if it's true to you and that's where you, what you want with your music, then mm. you're not selling out. Mm. You get. Mm. Like, if you just go, I just want to be a hit writer and have my hits and the money rolling in, and I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm happy there. I don't feel I need to express myself more as an artist. Then mm. you haven't sold out because that's actually who you are. Would you ever do that? Probably not because <laughs> I look. I've done this for 23 years, and uh, people have tried to shape me with contracts in the past. Mm -hmm. And the minute they start, you know, wanting to take away your creative vision, mm -hmm. a lot, you start wondering who would I be? Why would I work so hard for something that's not even my own vision? So it's no longer yeah. your vision. You know, I was just born with this journey, mm -hmm. and I've come to accept that. I may not have that huge world hit, it's okay, I'm cool with that. Mm. But I like that I'm able to travel, inspire, and explore, mm. and express myself. That's mm. my truth. How much money it's going to make, who knows. If mm. the song moves one person out there and inspires them not to commit suicide one day, or to believe that love can come around again, or one day they can make some money, or there's God, or whatever they want to believe in, and mm. they need at that moment, if I reach one person, I think that's worth millions. As long as they feel something from your music. Yeah, if some, if you move, if you stir a soul, I feel that's a very important part of writing, uh, being an artist. Mm. So, dance music. Back to your point though about the Afro pop thing. There's so much creativity here, but I feel like the only thing I I miss about being in Kenya is the lack of instrument-based songwriting. Mm. I really feel that everything is uh, synth-based. Just sitting with a guitar yeah. and doing, you know, or with a keyboard and composing off of that, it will add to the musical dialogue and broaden the spectrum so much more. So it could be just Afropop, but now uh, put more analog instruments in the production? If you use acoustic, analog oh. would be more the sound, yeah. digital versus analog, yeah. how you record it. Analog is warmer, they say, through tube mics and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But um, if you're looking more at instrument-based songwriting, the people who are currently writing off of loops, they'll get a whole other perspective. It'll just add more flavor. And then the other thing that may be interesting is, I believe fusion is the future. Mm. We're a global society. So I think eventually, the more we exchange, I come to Kenya, Kenyans travel abroad, and we work with different kinds of styles, we will come up with a fusion language that will just broaden the margins of culture. Mm. And then you can be doing whatever is your thing. I really have no problem with people who are just writing hit songs. They are rich, they can buy nice cars, they're happy with that. Mm. That's great, that's what they wanted, but cool. That's not, uh where your heart is. Look, you can only have one car to drive at a time. I have yeah. friends who have like five. <laughs> you know, I used to live in LA. Yeah. You know, there are people who have 20 to 100 cars. And they, they love it. And I'm thinking, why would you have so many cars? You can only drive one at a time. Yeah. What are you going to do with all those cars? Do you see? Yeah, I get you. I feel like the more things you own, the more, the more they own you. Mm. You know? The more houses you own, the more they own you because you have to worry about taking care of them, maintenance. If you want to be free and really flow, you have to be low maintenance. Mm. I could have a hundred guitars though. That would be okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't need a lot of jewelry and a lot of cars. I'm okay with one car, if it, as long as it works. Uh, before we play <laughs> Shine, uh, Shine is actually a really dope song. Uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, you have this insight and uh, this experience, not only from uh, writing your own music, but from Berkeley and chord progressions and all, and what it takes to create a hit song. Uh, do you think you're going to dive into production? I have already started. I've always co-produced all my all my productions. Mm. I've, I've, I'm a producer in that sense. I finance mm. my own albums. I've released about five albums by now, I think. Mm. One in Sweden, two in Berlin, one in America, one in Kenya. So, mm. 
I think that was it. Yes, and so I have always produced, and I've always been a co-producer actively in the arrangements, the audio, how we, how the result ends up being. Mm -hmm. But I have also started producing with urban styles and with loops, mm. which is why I say, you know, that gives me as an instrument-based songwriter to, be, to become more creative. It just gives me a Where new. Where will you be based uh, when you're doing this? Because I'm sure there are a lot of artists who are watching you right now in Kenya. They're like, I, I need to work with Anushka. I really want, okay, here's, uh, I'm scared to say because I don't know how I'm going to make this work, but I'm mm. hoping to start something called, I have Song Queen Music. Mm. I'm hoping to start a branch so that when I'm in Kenya, let's say I come to Kenya four or five months a year, that I can, you know, do it in a legal way, that I can help upcoming artists with coaching, production, songwriting, mm. and also get some pay for that to help me with my expenses here, but also which will allow me then to also do free things for y young people in areas where they don't have any means. Mm. Because in I terms feel of production? In terms of songwriting, production, mm. arrangement, lyric writing, um, how do, you know, production, a good producer, somebody like Quincy Jones, a good producer also should know music. Mm. He should know, he, she, excuse me, we need to include the women nowadays, yeah. this, which is great. She or he, what's the word you guys use nowadays? Is there like a one word for both? Raya. Huh? Raya. <laughs> you say, what, you're saying Raya for men and women? Yeah. Raya. <laughs> Raya. Raya. Okay, Raya. So, <laughs> Raya, <laughs> he, he or she, a good producer, is actually mm. someone who should be able to play an instrument, mm. who should understand the, pro the creative process. Because mm. how are you going to inspire and take out the best of an artist in front of you, you if you don't know those everything. elements? Yeah. yeah, and you need to know how to build a song for the listener's ear, how to travel with the music through the changes. Mm. There's a lot of craft behind a good producer. You know, it's not just slapping up some beats and slicing and dicing and going, yo, yo, yo. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's a bit more to it if you want to be really good. And then whoever's in front of you has something really unique. Mm. So it's up to the artist to find what's unique about them and also to ask for help from the producer and the team behind them. So the artist needs to come a little bit more prepared. A little? Uh. They oh, need to do their homework, basically. They need to be ready. Ready, ready, ready. Artists, mm. the biggest struggle for an artist is not learning how to play guitar, it's not learning how to write a song, it's mm. not learning how to slice loops, it's to figure out why am I unique? What's special about me? Like that is the biggest challenge. Sound or something? In any way, what uh. makes me unique? Why do people want to listen to me? What mm. do I have that's going to separate me from the herd? Because mm. if you're not coming out with something that's original, you're not going to catch people's interest that much. You might sound good and fall into like, oh, everybody sounds the same. Mm. But why are you doing it if you're not there to say something new uh, in a fresh way? You don't have to be new because you can't do create always something new. You mm. know, we will always have music that's been done before. Yeah. But you have to figure out what is your selling point, creatively and financially. Mm. So an artist would come to me, I'd say, where do you see yourself? What is unique about you? And if they say, oh, I can play guitar, millions of people can play guitar. Did you oh, invent a new million. style? Do you have a specific yeah, sound? I yeah. mean, so you have to go and find out what is really unique about the person. Mm. Doesn't that make sense to you? It does. Yeah. It does. Thank you so much for coming again to the East Circuit. We appreciate you. Oh, it's awesome. You, you're always very insightful. I think we <laughs> always learned something from you. Actually, I, I need to put something to the test. Sure. How what Russian you are. Style. You know, she's I called DJ Little Russian. I she's been boasting that I, I need to know how no, Russian no, no, you no, no, are no, no, no. before I we conclude. Boast anything to begin with. Uh, uh, you know a little Russian? Yeah. Yet. That was it. Ukona <laughs> Bahati. Yes. Ukona Bahati. At least uh, you're getting off easy this time. Yeah. But uh, we had a question today. Uh, we were asking uh, uh, people back at home, uh, what would you do with 100 million shillings if you won right now? Whoa. Okay, you know what I would do? Mm. I would do a lot of workshops for you guys. Workshops? Yeah, I would, I would do some kind of project where we could invest it now into doing some workshops with artists here and exporting them. Mm. Well, I get that sense that uh, you would buy a hundred guitars first of all. I would, wait, wait, I would, I would also kulipa kodi. Uh, <laughs> I would pay my rent. Kulipa kodi. Lafu nono ya guitar kaa miyamuaje hivi. What? Then you buy like a hundred guitars. No, no, no. Yes. I, 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 no, 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 no. I would, I would, we would actually create something because creation is more interesting than just a material possession. Mm. Creation leaves a legacy. Mm. You don't leave a legacy owning a hundred guitars. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm.
Unless maybe you create a museum with them and they, I don't know, you do something unique. <laughs> but I think everybody who's a true artist always wants to leave their mark on some way, you know? Yeah. yeah. No, I would definitely, then I would go, okay guys, let's, let's do something now. Let's create the workshops. Let's uh, do workshops for one month and let's find some upcoming artists and let's send them over to some local producers. Let's get some stuff happening and let's export it. Mm, nice. It would be fun. Uh, I would love that. It's actually creative, you know? Yeah. yeah. It sounds like it would be fun. Tell them to you're, you're give me the money. You're, <laughs> <laughs> you're about to play a Shine. Yeah. Tell us about it before you start. So Shine is um, a rewrite because another part of being a serious artist is you learn you have to rewrite a lot. You can't just accept the first version necessarily of what you create. Mm. So Shine is a rewrite from the first song I did with, well, from one of the songs I did with Teddy B in 2013. Mm. And it's a rewrite because I just felt it wasn't, it wasn't, it could get better, it could be improved for mm. a crossover market. Mm. So I rewrote it completely mm. and the way I rewrote it was I wanted it to be dedicated to the unseen heroes in society. Mm. And what I mean by that is the people who are invisible to us because we become numb. After a while there's just too much sad stuff going on in the world and you just can't deal with it anymore. Mm. But you know these people who are less fortunate Mm. who are brought up through hardship, they have these resilient souls mm. and they still smile, they still get up in the morning and I think to myself, like I have friends overseas who complain about losing a shoe and I think, please, have you been to, you know, you should see some people I've seen. But don't even have any shoes. Eh, thank you dear, yeah, exactly, yeah. that's what I mean. So this song I felt like everybody has a light and those people, let's say there's a beggar outside, you know, on the street begging, he's, he's on his knees because he doesn't have proper legs. I mm. saw somebody like that and yet he was smiling. Mm. And I thought, I felt so ashamed, I thought, my God, how can I ever complain about anything in my life? Mm. And I thought... When I'll there's uh, things like that happening right yeah. now. And then I thought, and I'll bet you that guy had a dream. Mm. And I'm wondering what that dream was. He has a light. Mm. If you gave him a platform, like you're giving me today, he'd probably have many stories to tell you. Mm. You see, everyone has something inside of them. So uh, this song is just to encourage people to just realize that and maybe become a bit more compassionate along the way. Because mm. when you feel your light, mm. you become very generous to other people. Mm. When you're still searching and you're feeling stingy, like I've got to hold on to it, I've got to hold on to it, this is mine, mine, you don't give anything out. Mm. You know? Yeah. So that's what this song is about. Okay. Thank that you was so deep, much. huh? It, it, that was so deep. Like I just For said. For a moment, you were just like, it was, <laughs> was just oh, let us know. I was like, okay, now I'm learning something again. Thank you so much for coming through. You guys, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure and uh, it's an honor to come. Thank you for It's being. an honor to yes. have you. Yeah. Uh, this you. is Shine by Anushka. a hustle, don't know how much more I can carry. Kuli pa kori kueka chakul hametsani, nina tamani sing. Forget everything and shine. Aha, ahebu angaza, uzi fichi mwangaza wako. Don't hide your light, shine. Everything will be all right. Shine. The sun will rise, Nina Jua. Dry tears from your eyes, and you will see our song. Chase shadows away. Takuona Uzi Tabatsamu. You could find love even in a matatu. Hey, hey, on an ordinary day, so shine. Aha, Hebu Angaza, Uzi Fichi Mwangaza Wako. Don't hide your light, shine. Aha, Hebu Angaza. Uzi fichi mwangaza wako Everything will be alright, just shine 
There's so much more in me Colors to be set free So much I could be So shine Ebu angaza Uzifichi mwangaza wako Don't hide your light Shine Ebu angaza Uzifichi mwangaza wako Everything will be alright Be you stay true Yeah you, you just keep on doing What you do and shine Be stay true Yeah you, you just keep on I keep on doing what you do and shine. I have one guy's just shine. Oh, Santisana, thank you.